Welcome to hole number one of the College Chaos Nine Hole Cup. Now, setting up here, classic, disgusting old course here. Navigator, I've got an extra mile seven in this example, but many other shots in the video will have EM sixes and even an EM five shot. So three top, one right. And make sure you have that ball guide to the left uh, of the tree branches. The branches can be in play here. And I did an adjustment here at 10 max. So not too big of a deal. Not trying to get a massive amount of power here. Just trying to get it down towards the uh, the corner, if you will, of this dog leg left. Second shot, we're going to be in a thorn or any kind of short iron range here. Now this one, uh, I'm going to go with my traditional two bars of backspin. And I'm basically just lining it up at the hole. There's something about this hole. It's always been a little bit difficult for me it's always kind of rubbed me the wrong way so to speak but i'm always willing to give it another try get back on the course huh, see what i did there <laughs> and uh and have a good time so i hope you guys are having a good time i just pulled in my tournament results from master brought in my first silver banner so i'm hyped up on that ready to make this awesome video i hope that you enjoy if you have any comments questions or concerns don't forget to leave them in the comment section below and hit that thumbs up on the video i appreciate you being here let's go to hole two hole number two now this might look like a difficult setup but i got the bottom of the red ring touching the rough the blue ring is going to be touching the tree now you'll notice i've applied two bars of backspin three bars of right spin it's my katana and my goliath club here so as you can see, like I said, red ring, blue ring, all lined up. And now we're going to make our 15% mid adjustment. And then we're going to give it 0.8 balls, bars, excuse me, of right curl. Now, this will change, of course, depending on the wind direction. But generally speaking, you want to get it up behind the hole and roll it back. Kind of a little bit of a funnel and at the pin. That's how we do it. Hole number three, I'd say this interesting look at an early albatross titan well six here gonna give it four and a half top two bars of right spin and i'm setting this one up at max with about half that red ring in the rough on the right hand side 10 percent max adjustment and as you can see i'm just giving this like circle break over power and almost a half a ball of right curl the idea here is you don't need to go too, too far because you can actually get yourself sort of out of line. You don't want to be too much to the left. Closer to the rough on the right will give you a better angle of approach. Second, with the snipe eight only in this spot here, and I'm going to use 3.5 bars of backspin and roughly the top of the red ring, top of the rough. 5% max will be the adjustment here. The problem is, is if you set up too close to the water, and you have to pull down over that sharp uh, brick edge, if you will. Uh, it can be very, very difficult to get a consistent outcome. But with the low wind here, and consider using a kingmaker if you can afford it to keep it even lower, I'm just able to keep it from pulling down into the water with this setup. So you could consider giving it a bar of right spin and moving it even closer to the bunker, of course, depending on the wind. All you got to do, hit perfect, baby. And sometimes it just feels like there's nothing that can go wrong. And other times, you just need a little bit of a better wind angle. Hole number four, this is an absolutely classic Eagle Peak par three. 0 0.5 bars of top spin, three bars of right spin as a base. And there is a little bit of a funnel rolling this one down to the hole my opponent is mad at me i guess because i'm doing such a good job I'm gonna play 40 percent max distance here max elevation With that in mind it's a high elevation shot very good opportunity once you find the just perfect little setup but this is generally the play hitting it into the rough on the left hand side just close to the tree you can always check my notes airlickgaming.com for free download the pdf and see if you can't get some booms good luck Hole number five, this is a fun par four. It's kind of long, uh, but there's definitely good opportunities for drops. I'm going to use a quarterback here, two top, one right. Might even be one top, one right if you've got a QB 10 or a little bit stronger tailwind or you're using a higher power ball, but whatever you got to do, I'm aiming tip of the ball guide at the center between the two bunkers at the far far end of the uh, fairway, uh, well, the middle fairway here and i'm just hitting a regular normal shot trying to get this one close up in between the bunkers without going into them sounds kind of like a game show but at the end of the day 
it's going to give you a really nice look on the second shot. So just like this, up in there, luckily there's a big slope. So roll and settle back in a nice little spot. Uh, I have hit these bunkers before, and it's an ugly situation. So whatever you do, don't do that. Second shot here with the sniper. And I'm going to play this setup with 1.2 back. Bar of right spin. And we're basically going to use the slope on the back of this green, as you can see here with the tip of the ball guide, to roll it um, back from the top of the green back down towards the pin. This one here, now I play it normally at about 10% mid one to one, um, but I think 10 max is going to be a good starting reference point for you to keep in mind. Uh, it's easy to remember, and it's certainly, depending on the wind direction and velocity, going to be a good shot for you. This one comes in just slightly off mark, but just like you can see, hitting on that fairway, rolling up to the top, or darn near to it. And this one could have certainly benefited from the left spin instead of the right spin, but get the zoom. Oh, you know this is going to be the drops for days in the live tournament play. Hole number six, this is a nasty par five. I've got a Titan in an extra mile, but don't hesitate to bring a Zerk for the second shot here. I set it up with three bars of tops, bars of left spin. I got a little bit of that red ring, maybe close to 20% clipping into the rough. Because of the headwind here, I'm gonna use like circle break or more over power and at least 0.8 ball of left curl, and maybe even a little bit more. This is the kind of hole that greatly favors high level clubs. So keep that in mind. Don't hesitate to ball up, especially for this second shot. Now, the second shot, I'm going to use the big dog. I think you should do the same. I'm literally just trying to get it to the green, especially in a difficult headwind. And that's why I'm showing you this example. Two back, two left. And you'll see I'm deciding to play it on the right. Uh, you can play it on the left. It's basically kind of the same thing, but in reverse. Two back, two left, like I said. And the, the idea here for me is I just want to get this ball to the green and secure the eagle. Take a look up and down your bracket. I guarantee you in the rookie division, especially, you're going to see many, many players getting a birdie or worse here on hole number six. And I do not want that to be you. So play it safe. Get it close. You got a chance. Uh, but keep this one on the playing surface. Hole number seven, another one of these terrible city park holes. Uh, I'm going to show you what I deem to be the safest play. You can play this one with the navigator. Keep the wind down. I'm bouncing in that first fairway spot. Going to use about 3.2 bars of top spin in a crosswind and about 0.5 bars of right spin. Notice I've got that top of the yellow ring close to the rough. You could certainly set this one up uh, a little bit further from the rough if you've got a little bit more top spin, maybe in a true tailwind where you don't need as much. Again, I think it's safe when you play down here. There's many other shots on this hole, left, right, center, all sorts of stuff. But this one will keep you in play. It's going to give you absolutely an opportunity to get the drop. And again, I think it'll keep you out of trouble. I don't want you in trouble. I want you in the bottom of the cup right where you belong. Hole number eight. I think this is a terrible par four. I'm just going to say it. Katana, quarterback, 3.8 top, three bars of right spin. I'm at max extension with that white ring touching the bunker. So I'm going to move it over. There we go. A little bit, a little bit. I mean, it's maybe half the white ring, but just for safety's sake, get that white ring touching the bunker. Max over power, max right curl. This is, again, a very good hole for higher level clubs. This has APOC drive written all over it. But I used the quarterback or the big topper for the curl here. Keep that in mind. A very, very good spot, uh, but still a lot of work to be done. The backbone, level 9 or 10. I play that at 1 to 1. Otherwise, I would work from somewhere along the 10 to 15 percent spot. Uh, setting it up, trying to find a consistency here. This course, well, it looks easier than it actually is. You can see how that fairway is sloping down towards the water. Um, you know, again, bigger clubs, more ball guides, more opportunities. But two back, 1 to 1. It's definitely easy enough to set it up and give it a look. Uh, this this tournament's going to be tough. I know in Master, people are still going to be dropping everything, but I'll be making notes in Pro for the last time, and then the tournament after that, the nine hole after that, making Master free-to-play notes. So come by and check out the stream. I'm really looking forward to it, but I'm a little scared. Hole number nine, difficult hole here, but I'm looking to try to get us as close as possible. Dirk, extra mile level six here, giving it four and a half top and about 0.8 bars of right spin now you'll notice when i'm stretching this one out i'm gonna check where that tip of the ball guide is and it's just like i don't know half a ring left of the fairway marker maybe a little bit less than that and that's really the indicator that i'm using here i'm going to adjust 10 percent max 
as you can see right here, just a little bit, like one and a bit rings. And then we're gonna push it back up to max. Bum, 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 bum. And then all I'm gonna use here is about circle drop over power. There we go. And the idea here is we wanna bounce on the fairway and then clip the with the second bounce. And then we're gonna roll out into a very nice position in the middle of the fairway. So third bounce and then out is what I really meant to say. You could certainly play this to the left. There's a great shot coming in from there as well. But here, I think we're going to do just fine coming in with the big dog level six. Now, negative 10% max is the elevation that I'm working with. Two bars of backspin, 0.5 left spin. And as you can see, kind of have that red ring a little bit close to the rocks on the fairway. Guys, I really appreciate you hanging out, checking out the video, dropping all the kind comments, thumbs up and support. I cannot do it without you. I appreciate you all so very much. Negative 10% max. Going to do our assessment and see what we can do to get this wall close. This is a tough one. Anytime you're trying to finish the tournament with a big dog albatross, you know, it's going to take a little bit of luck, but it's going to be fun. It's always a good time, and I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. So once again, thank you for watching. Good luck in the tournament. I hope you get some booms out there, and we'll see you out there very, very soon.